Look up San Francisco in the guidebook and you'll be bombarded with a laundry list of must-see attractions. The majestic Golden Gate Bridge, the bustling streets of Chinatown, and the tourist-packed Pier 39. All those predictable hotspots that make every visitor's checklist. And I'm willing to bet that North Beach barely manages to sneak its way onto page 25 if it's lucky enough to make the list at all. You see, when I mentioned to a friend that we were embarking on a journey to uncover the Italian legacy that still lives in North Beach, her puzzled look spoke volumes. She had been living in San Francisco for five years, and in her mind, North Beach was merely a hotspot for nightlife and bar hopping. But there's got to be more to that story, right? I mean, this is where Italian immigrants flocked after the 1906 earthquake. At one point, five Italian newspapers were in circulation around this neighborhood. Heck, with all the red, white, and green around here, it's either a lot of Italian pride or Christmas is coming. So, is Italian heritage still alive in this neighborhood today? That's what we're going to find out. Welcome, Welcome to, to North Beach! Beach. I love how the Italian flag is everywhere, on the poles, on the ground, and even on that person's garage. <laughs> I love it. First thing we're gonna do over here is taking coffee. But I wanted to bring Juliana over here because this is a famous coffee. Actually, Francis Ford Coppola wrote most of the screenplay of The Godfather in this coffee shop. Maybe inside of this coffee shop, I will be inspired to write another script for another video of Tourist to Local. <laughs> Once you figure out how to open the door, oh. <laughs> you realize Cafe Trieste is a cash-only spot. ATM in the back with a few characters that you can tell are the neighborhood regulars that have been coming here for decades. This coffee house is so, so cool and what a perfect way to start our day. I thought it was so interesting because on the drive down here, I was doing some research. It turns out that the owner, the founder of this coffee house, this place was established in 1956, he came to the United States and was disgusted by all the Americans drinking instant coffee. And this actually was the first coffee house on the West Coast to serve espresso based drinks. And they do a freaking good job. When Martina was served as espresso, he was smelling it like, oh my god, this is going to be a good one. And uh, of course we got some cannolis to go along with it. They look delicious. As we traveled through our cannoli, we began to understand why it was that Francis Ford Coppola spent so much time sitting here writing the Godfather screenplay. You can practically picture him riding away in a corner here, wiping cannoli cream from his mustache between scribbling dialogue. But if there's something Italians love more than their coffee, it's their cars. What did we find, Martine? Like a car show <laughs> of Italian cars. So you can see Maserati, Alfa Romeo, Ferrari. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> I don't know which one I will buy, this one or the red one. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a man with good taste, but we're here for something else. As we were walking around and I was finishing my coffee way too slow, we found ourselves back somewhere that we've been before in one of our videos. Exactly. We are nearby Chinatown. And actually we were talking about high diverse this city is. You can find uh, Chinatown, you can find North Beach or Little Italy, how it's known as well. And also you can find Mission District, you know, mm -hmm. so the, the Latin American or the Italian or the Chinese, uh, very close. And it's nice because you can go to these places and then find some kind of food that is uh, from there. Yeah, it's like you're kind of traveling around the world almost. And it's cool because we've now done videos on Mission District, on Chinatown. Now we're finishing off with North Beach. If there's any other neighborhoods you guys want us to show, please let us know because we're loving making these videos for you That's guys. Right. But anyway, right now we're in Washington Square. That's right. Which we were here during our Chinatown video eating actually. Anyway, but we're, we're enjoying exploring North Beach so far. And with that, should we head to the next destination? Vamonos. You might want to uh, save your breath because it's going to be quite the hike. <laughs> <laughs> but before we left, Juliana tried to do whatever she's trying to do here. My guess is procrastinating the big walk up to the very place she's trying to pinch. And by the way, I don't blame her. It's not movie magic you're seeing here. These hills are really that steep. Don't forget to look backwards when you're going up these big hills because there's some great views. <laughs> The thigh-burning hill we walked up took us to a little place called Coit Tower, offering the best views in the city. 
Legend has it that Lily Hitchcock Coit, a spunky lady with an interest in gambling and firefighting, an interesting combo if you ask us, left a chunk of her fortune to fund this tower, and boy did she make a statement. Coit Tower stands tall, ready to impress both tourists and locals alike. The elevators are broken, because of course, so the climb up is only for the brave, but if you choose to make the hike, you'll find a treasure trove of depression era murals to keep you going, well, for the first few floors. So if you can see some art. Maybe cannolis wasn't the best uh, pregame for this hike. <laughs> I really like it because you can see all the places and me living over here almost two years and I know what it is, you know, like, oh, there's Acatraz, there's here uh, something nine, uh, there's Sausalito, there's the Golden Gate, there's the Financial District, uh, Oakland, my hood, you know, there, there's a couple of things that I really like. Luckily for us, the walk down is a lot easier than the walk up. Meanwhile, across town, the Italian flag welcome us back to the sea level. We're walking this street and you can see this Sicilian restaurant. And I was explaining to Juliana what is the symbol of La Trinacria, but it's a symbol of Sicily. Hmm, if only one of us had family in Sicily and we could go visit them and maybe film a whole video series. Uh, that would be pretty cool. That's not a bad idea, Juliana. Uh, in the meantime, we'll just call this market research. Enough dropping subtle hints to you guys on an upcoming destination. It's time for lunch. Step into Molinari Delicatessen, the SF haven for salami enthusiasts. This place is more than just a deli. It's a slice of culinary history and a testament to the work ethic of a family that has conquered continents and tantalized taste buds since 1896. P.G. Molinari, a determined man with wanderlust in his heart, embarks on a multi-year odyssey with his father from Italy to the Golden Gate City in 1870. The journey takes him through London, Peru, Haiti, and eventually Mexico City. We know that place, where he and his father find work in a restaurant for a few years. His father ventures up north via mule and discovers a little slice of heaven known as San Francisco. Recognizing the city's potential and welcome into the arms of the Italian community here, he quickly returns to Mexico City to retrieve his son, and together they set up shop in the heart of the North Beach in 1896. Fast forward through earthquakes, fires, and a bank loan, and you'll find Molinari still standing tall as the last family-owned Italian salami producer in the city. Their dedication to the craft remains unwavering, and their passion evident in every slice of perfectly seasoned salami they create. Today, the deli specializes in delicious gourmet sandwiches, homemade raviolis, sauces, cheeses and wines imported from Italy, and of course, salami. Try it. Me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> Thank you. That's hot copa. Oh, yum. It's a very good one. What do you think? What do you think of this place? I love it. They have so many things imported from Italy, and Sicily specifically. Love Authentic? It. Yeah, I think so. A uh, basil turkey special on a rosemary roll, and then it's going to be a South Beach special on a Dutch crunch roll. <laughs> Look and you can see the artichoke heart. It's so good. It tastes so authentic. Or maybe I'm so hungry, but it's amazing. <laughs> maybe a combination of both, but it's amazing, amazing, amazing. Wow. The best panino that I had outside of Italy. You know, Italian panino. Wow, Martinez not wrong. Probably the best sandwich I've had. Very good. You know what it's good about here? They put in like a lot of effort. It's not some they don't do it very fast. They put in like a lot of effort in every love. single sandwich. Yeah. In every single panino. Yeah. So you have to you have to wait a bit to get your sandwich, but totally worth it. In our search to find all things Italian here in San Francisco, we've been brought to a different area that's actually not North Beach. We are visiting El Museo Italo Americano. Like that, like it's Italian, but it sounds Spanish, right? <laughs> yes, it does. Now, this museum celebrates the Italian American influence on San Francisco. It has rotating exhibits, and today's it's all about the San Francisco Opera. But my question for you is this why, when we were in North Beach, is there no beach in North Beach? What's up with that? That's a very good question. 
what I read it's that used to be a beach over there mm -hmm. but they start building and building and building more mm -hmm. so North Beach loses nope. yeah. the water yeah exactly so, <laughs> so I guess now we got a, a glimpse of the water maybe how it used to be back in the day we're over in Fort Mason let's go check out the museum let's go during the Gold Rush era, San Franciscans couldn't get enough of opera, witnessing over 5,000 performances between 1851 and the 1906 earthquake, although mostly by traveling troops. However, in 1921, Neapolitan conductor Gaetano Marola stepped into the scene with a grand vision for a locally owned opera company. With immense support from the community, the San Francisco Opera Association was born. The exquisite War Memorial Opera House, funded by the community during the Great Depression as a tribute to World War I veterans, became the chair home for the association. Today that legacy lives on and the San Francisco Opera still puts on performances today. Well, not literally today, there's no shows happening tonight, so instead we head back to North Beach for another meal. Hungry again. <laughs> one last stop for the day and I'm excited for this one because finally we got some pizza on the agenda. That's right, but pizza is not the only thing that we're gonna eat over here. Actually we choose this place because they have an amazing burrata that Juliana loves. Yeah, they have a mozzarella bar and this looks incredible. Oh, by the way, the name of the restaurant is Il Casaro. Yes. So we got some burrata to share and some pizza. We're going to dig in. And we forgot to mention that the cheese is imported from Italy. So there's only a certain amount of quantity that they can sell per day. Look at that delicious burrata. So good. This place offers the perfect Napolitan style pizza with that caputo flour, San Marzano tomatoes, and wood fire oven all imported directly from Napoli. Yup. This is how you do pizza in the North Beach. We just got, we just got a pizza. Normally we were very boring and we always order margarita. But right now I see this one with mortadella pistachio. It's amazing and it tastes better. Turns out you can find some authentic Italian experiences right here in the heart of San Francisco. Oh yeah. And also we're gonna leave you guys another video if you want to continue watching our adventures over here. So long. Travel well. And make the world your neighborhood. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.